My name is Dan. And I have a problem. I want a bat signal. So neighborhood dads can come hang out at my bar. And the cool part is my bar also happens to be my workshop. Haven't you heard of phones, you might ask? Yeah, dude, I have. But most people my age don't use Signal, Discord, Telegram, WhatsApp. So we are left with text messaging, which devolves into a disruptive experience for our children, our wives, and occasionally ourselves. So I'm gonna resolve that by making a bat signal. I thought about making a big one. Ben from Nighthawk and Light did a whole video on how to do it and you should watch it. But I live near a few airports and I'm pretty sure that would get me heavily fined or possibly in prison pretty quickly. So my revised idea is to deploy multiple personalized bat signals that just live on my neighborhood friend's Wi-Fi. Huh? Where are they going to be? They're going to be on coffee tables, they're going to be on the mantles, they're going to be ideally on dining room tables. I'm going to set up a, a jig right now. It's a blind from Home Depot and a, a way to like use these things. These are my, my, my first try. I kind of want to just start with something that feels like it should work that doesn't. See what happens. Go from there. Here's the first test. I hooked up a little 12 volt light. Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn the lights off and turn the power on. For real. That, that sucks. It's always blurry. That's the thing. What did we decide to do here? We decided to add a Fresnel lens. They're not Fresnel lenses, which is what I've been calling them for a while. I want to collimate the light. So I put the Fresnel lens here. I'm gonna turn this off. I'm not sure what I'm missing about this. I don't understand optics. I just thought like get, <laughs> get Fresnel lens and it'll just magically work, but it doesn't. I decided I should focus the light more. What if I take the template image and make it just as small as like the light emission source and see what happens there. I'm gonna try that. I made a little teeny template. It's, it's the same thing, but much smaller. And it's exactly the diameter of the light coming out of the LED housing. I have no idea if that's gonna make a difference, but we're gonna wing it and see what happens. So we're gonna try and put this right up against the light. It's much smaller, so the light will all go through it. And this distance should be the same. Let's turn this off and see how it comes out. <laughs> Ah, freaking rules. That's amazing. Dude, that's gonna be on people's ceilings. I need a way to, you know, make it go off in other people's houses. I'm ultimately going to be doing this with ESP32 chips. They work really well. They connect to the internet. They do everything I want them to do. I need them to control some stuff. The LED lights that I'm using are 12 volts. The chip could supply five or 3.3 volts. I'll have something that increases the voltage, but then you need to control the voltage. Voltage is kind of like pressure. These chips output 3.3 volts, so just like a tiny little pressure, like whereas 12 volts is like, that's a lot of pressure of water moving through there. You need to have a way to have the lower voltage control the higher voltage. In this case, I'm using an opto isolator because it works. Opto isolators are really cool a little bit of 3.3 voltage comes into it, and then that shoots a laser that shoots at a receiver. When the receiver's activated, it's like, hey, let the high pressure through. So they never actually touch each other. They are opto-isolated. At this moment, it's occurring to me, I've got all of the circuits out. Why not give this thing some music too? It's gonna have light. Let's make some music. Look at these. Super cheap, not hard to power. And after screwing around a lot, I found these guys. I'll zoom into Shockingly, at 3.3 volts, this can run that speaker pretty darn loud. What do we have now? We've got this big speaker here, and we've got this little thing from DF Player, which has a micro SD card in it. That's what does our music. Let's do it. Music. Yeah, awesome. It's, it's working exactly the way it's supposed to. Badass. I need buttons now. I need feedback, user feedback. The buttons are easy to wire and they provide the essential functions of the user interface. Indicate to me whether you're coming to the party, aren't sure if you can come or not coming, and turn the light off and make music stop playing. It lets my server know, oh, Keith is uncertain, Pat is yes, Matt is, is a no, Dave is a maybe. Like, 
and it will update those numbers so you have a sense of how many people are coming. That's what the buttons are for, and I think that's gonna work well. When I say my home server, I'm talking about Indigo. It's, it's my home automation server. I've been using it for 10 years. The community is as awesome now as it was 10 years ago. I highly recommend it. Matt and Jay, you rule. I'm not paid by them though. I have a sense of what the electronics are, and I know a little bit about speaker design. So now I have to figure out how to like make something that's nice and pretty that will house the optics and the electronics and the speakers and have a room for buttons. So I need to go to CAD land. All right, look at me. I'm gonna show how easy it is. I'm connecting lines and I'm making it look really easy and oh, look at all of that electronics. Honestly, if you're into this, uh, just look in the comments section below, go to my website and all the stuff's available for download. I'll skip through it. I'm, I'm doing CAD, I'm making it look so easy. Look, oh, things are, they're three dimensional now. This is awesome. Again, I'm gonna blow through this. If you're interested in this, just check my website, check the, the description. Ermagerd, oh Ermagerd. Oh this is not a product placement. Give me money. Yeah! Here's what we have. This is the stuff going on. Arranging the parts. Hot gluing and soldering. And after all the soldering is done, it comes out like this. Oh wow, it's got the DF player module soldered in. It's got some headers. It's got the buttons. It's got an ESP32, a resistor, an opto isolator, a step up converter, only it's bad. Cause I got like zealous with flux or something and like destroyed some little traces. And, and that's not the only one that's bad. And here's another bad one. Here's another bad one. Not a bad one. I feel like I was forcing conflict a little bit there just because we're about five eighths through the video. And I know you need conflict to have good, compelling storytelling that the viewer wants to continue to watch. What do you, what do you, you think you're, you're freaking, you're, you're a storyteller now? You're out of your depth. But I just want people to watch me build stuff. People are already watching. Build more stuff and more people will come. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good? That's, that's a conflict. That's a conflict. That's a conflict. Thank you. That's a conflict. We're good. We're good. So we've got these cool boards that everything works on. This is the bottom. I want to make it nice. These things are pretty cool. Little rubber feet. Let's really just stick them on. So use a heat set insert. There's probably better ways to do it. Bada bang, bada boom. It's time for assembly, or is it? Do we need some more finishing first? Here's everything soldered together. It's nice, it works, I'm super psyched. This is the housing, it needs some work. It's, it's got big, thick print lines. I printed a 0.4 millimeters speaker, 12 volt LED. Lastly, bottom, because you, know, you, you need a way to hold it in, and I was pretty psyched that I got it to like friction fit. Next up, I don't like 3D printing things unless I'm making them nice. We're gonna make this nice. This is a deburring tool. Oh, it's soothing. I'm cleaning them up. I am not a prop maker. But here's my thing I 3D printed. This little thing goes on the top. Standard 3D printing procedure and finishing for me. Douse it with two-in-one filler sandable primer. Bondo glazing and spot punny. 100 grit sandpaper just to get junk off of it. Sorry, 120 I think I used here. Rinse and repeat. Another layer of fillable primer. I didn't wait too long for it to dry, so I'm gonna wet sand it, because you can do that sooner. I'm gonna go straight up to 400, see how it looks. I wanna make these things pretty, so I'm using spaz sticks, Mirochrome, something, something. Here is my airbrushing suite. Let me turn on the extractor. It's like, I think acetone based, which makes it dry really quickly. Voila. I don't know, I think that looks like aluminum. This friction fits. I think that's gonna work pretty well. This is the lens. The convex part is on the inside. Oh, that's cool. This is the final project. It looks good. Let's see how it works. I, I made some buttons to make them a little cooler. There's I'm awesome, I'm coming button, and I don't know button, and uh, sorry I can't make it, dude. I had to think a fair amount about what sounds would play based on what button you hit, because my friends, they have children, infants, wives. The wives are cool, but eh. If the thing starts making lots of noise and you hit the no button and it's like me taunting you, 
it's gonna get unplugged. The best idea would be if you hit the no button, it just plays a gong sound. If you hit the I don't know button, it plays a inspirational quote. You can do it! And if you hit the yes button, that took some work. I reached out to the people who frequently would hang out. And I said, give me three clips that get you pumped up, that make you want to hang out. And then I took them and I randomized them. So when this goes off, if you can come and you hit the yes button, you will be greeted with a randomized clip of one of your compadres. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to go hang out with dads and drink. I'm pretty happy with my first one. I am not happy that I'm going to make eight or nine more of these because that's going to get boring and I need to break this up. So in the meantime, I thought, well, I need a switch to like turn on and off the bad signals. Kind of steampunk electric chair. Ele Frankenstein. We'll do Frankenstein. I'm going to give myself an hour to make that. And it's probably going to take a long time to finish these off. And this is probably going to wind up in a montage. <laughs> It's 9.30 p.m. on a weeknight and the children are sleeping. I made a brisket. The keg is operational. Now, it's time to see if this thing actually works. I can be really embarrassed if it doesn't work. It's working. The bat signals went off. I lit a path to the bar shop and it was a good party. That's really cool you made it this far through my video. If you liked it, like it. If you don't like it, dislike it. Consider subscribing either way. Old people, that means you have to log in first to your Gmail probably, and then hit subscribe or like. That actually gives me lots of ammo to justify coming out to my workshop and making things, maybe being amusing, maybe teaching something, sleeping less, which I can work with. Thanks for making it to the end of season one, episode three of Cure's Code and Fire. We're gonna eke out one more. We're gonna eke out one more in season one. Out.